And we have a clearer picture this morning of a daring naval SEAL raid, Navy SEAL, I should say, raid last weekend in Somalia. Their target, a leader of the terror group Al-Shabaab, who goes by the name Ikira. The SEALs came out of the Indian Ocean in small boats before dawn, but they were spotted as they moved toward a seaside compound. A firefight broke out, and with the element of surprise gone, the SEALs lost their chance to take him alive. The SEAL commander decided not to call in airstrikes because of women and children in the compound. Instead, he ordered his men to withdraw to a Navy ship offshore. The aborted raid comes just two weeks after Al-Shabaab launched an attack on a mall in Kenya. Senior correspondent John Miller is a former FBI assistant director. John, good morning. Good morning. So what do we know about the man who's the object of this search? Arkema has been around for a while, although he hasn't been ho high profile like some other uh, Al-Shabaab or Al-Qaeda leaders. But he goes back to the East Africa bombings in 1998 through his association with Harun Fazul, who was the individual who was basically the bridge between Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab in Somalia. Uh, so he's an individual who is connected to the plot against the Paradise Hotel in 1998. This was an Israeli tourist spot. That plot came with the attempt to shoot down an Israeli charter jet uh, in 2002. So you're seeing somebody who has been behind the scenes of a lot of serious plots. And this is somebody the U.S. wanted to neutralize because there are new plots afoot targeting places in Kenya. We saw the mall attack. Mm -hmm. There were plots against the U.N. headquarters and other targets. So there have been plenty of drone attacks in this area. However, the U.S. did not use a drone in this instance, apparently because of the number of women and children, civilians there. Will the U.S. go back? So I wouldn't be selling Arkema any life insurance policies anytime soon. They're not going to hit that same location in that same way. They've exposed those tactics, techniques, and procedures. Mm -hmm. But they certainly have an array of options. Drone strikes is one, airstrikes are another. It just depends where he's on the move, where they can find a clear target on him. That won't be today, and that won't be tomorrow. But he's going to be looking over his shoulder okay, for a while. Okay, but will the possibility of these kinds of attacks coming in, these kinds of efforts to capture these people, cause them to drill down deeper and avoid? detection. You know, there's that old uh, saying coined by Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. you can run but you cannot hide. Uh, these people, uh, you know, in Somalia may operate out in the open or they may go into hiding. But if you look at the Osama bin Laden case, if they look for you long enough, they will find you. The other thing, John, and we touched on this a little bit yesterday, but the fact that they didn't want him dead, it appears they wanted him alive. What do we think he knows? What do we want from him? Well, he would have a, an awful lot of intelligence about al-Shabaab, the relationship between al-Shabaab and al-Qaeda, how the money goes back and forth, but also uh, planned attacks, past attacks. It would be worth capturing him alive. But I'm, I'm also fairly sure that part of the reason that they were going in with people instead of air cover was the idea that they understood there would be other people who could be collateral damage. When, when you do it face to face, you have more of an opportunity of a targeted strike towards your actual intended target. And because of what you've reported first on our show previously, the concern that they may be dabbling in chemical weapons. And that's a, a frightening step for Al-Shabaab. They do have a research and development program that the U.S. is concerned about. John Miller, thank you.